Have you ever wondered why your console log statements show up twice or why you're getting weird errors or warnings in your console when working with React? It's almost certainly because of this single line of code. React Strict Mode adds in some additional restrictions in your React code and helps future-proof your React code for future editions of React that are going to be dealing with asynchronous code. All of this is super important, and in this video, I'm going to be explaining why React Strict Mode works the way it does, how you can take advantage of, and why it's important for you. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today, we're talking about Strict Mode. Now, there are six different things that strict mode is going to do for you, which I'm going to cover in this video. They're all going to be time stamped in the description so you can jump to the ones you care about. But also, I kind of want to talk about what strict mode is in general and why it's important. So whenever you boot up a new React application, I just have a simple create React app application here. I've deleted all the code except for our index and our app.js file. And as you can see, in the index, you have this component rendering React doc strip mode, and then your entire app is being rendered inside this strict mode. This is how you enable strict mode in React. By default, this is going to be there every time you create a new React application, but you can remove it. For example, if you don't want to use strict mode, just remove it and now you're no longer in strict mode. Or maybe you only want to do strict mode in a certain part of your app. So for example, you could just come in here and I could say react dot strict mode. And I could wrap just a portion of my application in strict mode. And now only the code inside of this, you know, react strict mode here is going to be running in strict mode. Generally, in 99.9% .9 of all your use cases, it's going to make the most sense for you to actually just use strict mode in the actual index.js. So let's just bring this back to how it was like this. And this is how every application you're gonna start up is going to be structured. Now, the most important thing to know about strict mode is it only actually makes changes to your code in development. When you push your code to production, it works as if this strict mode was not even there at all. Strict mode is purely a tool for development purposes that helps you find different bugs in your code or different errors in your code that React thinks you should change. And there are six different things that I wanna talk about. And the first one I wanna talk about is probably the most important of all of them. And this is dealing with how React detects unintended side effects. In order to explain this process of unintended side effects, I have this somewhat complex example. I'll explain to you exactly what's going on, but this has all the different unintended side effects that React is trying to make sure we avoid. So let's go through our application here real quickly. Very first thing I'm doing is I'm just logging out that we are running our function. Then I have a state for handling our count, as well as a reducer that's handling its own count variable, as well as this is admin boolean. On the right-hand side of my screen, if I just refresh this, you can see we have our first state right here. This is the state that is handled by state. That's why it's labeled state. Our reducer count is right here. And then is admin, which is inside of our reducer, is this button right here. Every time I click the button, it's going to do something. So if we scroll down here, you can see for our normal state, when we click the button, all we're doing is incrementing the count by one, and I'm logging out that we are updating the state. I'm also rendering out the count and then the doubled count, which is inside of this memo. So we're using memo here and we're just logging out the doubling of that count. This is not something you would never use memo for actually, but it's just a demo of how use memo works when it comes to unintended side effects. Now down here with our reducer, when we click on the button, we're just gonna increment our count by one. And here, when we click on the button, we're just going to be toggling the admin state between true and false. And all the way at the top here, we have our actual reducer function, which is just adding one to our count and is toggling our admin true or false. Now, if you're unfamiliar with any of these hooks, state, reducer, memo, any of those, I have a full course on React hooks. It's called React Hooks Simplified. It's linked down in the description for you to learn all of these different hooks. Now, if we just refresh our page real quick and I just inspect our page, let's see what actually is logged out in the console. You can see when we log out our console, we get four different things being logged. We get function body, memo, and then function body, and then memo being logged again. And you'll notice that two of these logs are actually grayed out. The reason for that is because I'm using something called the React Developer Tools. You can see I have this components and this profiler tab. This is coming from those React Dev Tools. And these React Dev Tools are an extension you can install in any browser. If I look at my extensions, you can see I have the React Developer Tools right here, and it just adds these extra tools. And what one thing that it does is actually gray out all of these extra log messages. That way they don't clog up your actual logging space. So they don't really, you know, mentally take up as much space for you. So you can see immediately we're logging out our function body twice and we're logging out this memo twice. Now, if I interact with my site, for example, let's say that I change my reducer value, you can see it's logging our function twice and it's calling that reducer function twice. Everything is getting triggered twice. Same thing when I update my admin, everything is getting toggled twice. When I update my state, you can see again, everything is getting toggled twice. The memo, the state, the function body, anything that gets interacted with gets interacted with twice. 
Now, in order to understand why this is actually happening, we need to understand how React works under the hood just a little bit. React is broken into two different sections. We have the render phase, which is phase one, and then we have the commit phase, which is phase two. The render phase is when React actually runs your component and it goes through and does all the calculations. So it gets your new state values, it gets all your stuff, you know, being calculated, it figures out what your JSX and HTML is supposed to look like. It does all of the hard work. This is like the slow phase, the phase that does all the hard work, calculates everything, figures out what your new HTML will look like. And then in stage two, when we actually commit those changes, React figures out, okay, what is different between this new HTML and the old HTML, and it updates those parts that are new. So like when I click on this button, it changes the number inside this button. The commit phase, that last phase, is super quick, very easy for React to do because it usually only has to change a few things on your site, like a few different inputs or buttons or text, while the render phase, that first phase, is much slower and much longer. Because of the slowness of that render phase, React is starting to experiment with trying to break that render phase up and do different parts of it in parallel possibly, or maybe doing different things in between, so making it async, so like it'll run part of your render, and then something else on your app will happen, and then it'll do more rendering off to the side. So the ability to break this up, have it happen multiple times before an actual commit, all of that is stuff that React wants to do in the future. And to make sure that your code is going to work when those changes get implemented, what they do now is they just do everything twice. They do every single time that you have something happening for like state changing, memo changing, it does all of those different things twice. And the reason for that is to make sure you don't have any unintended side effects. In order to show you what I'm talking about, let's just come all the way down here. I'm just gonna add a new piece of state that we're gonna store. And this piece of state is gonna be called global. And it's just gonna render out some text, which is just a global count, just like that. And then let's create that global count and we're going to create it up here const global count equals zero to start with so if i just yep you can see the number right here is zero to start with and then what i want to do is every single time that i update my normal state i want to update my global count as well so i can say global count equals global count plus one so now my global count will be incremented by one every time I change my state. So I can change my reducer, my admin, you can see nothing's happening to my global count. Now when I click on my state, you're gonna notice we get an error. I just need to make sure this is a let variable, not a const variable. I'm too used to doing everything with const variables. So you can see reducer, admin, nothing's happening. When I click my state though, you'll notice my global variable is being updated by two at a time instead of one at a time. Intuitively, this doesn't make sense because you know I'm only updating my global count one time. I wanted to increment by one. But the reason React is doing this is because this is a side effect. This is something that shouldn't be happening inside of the setting of state, or it shouldn't be something that happens inside your function body. This is something that should be in a use effect, for example, because it's something that is happening based on certain changes in your application. Essentially, anytime you have these side effects, whether it's like calling an API, updating some global variable, just something that has some kind of side effect, React wants you to be able to catch those things. It's not gonna tell you, you know, there's no error that says, hey, this is a problem, you should not be doing this. But when you run your application, you start clicking buttons, you're like, hey, this is incrementing by two, that's not right. So it's up to you to catch the problem, but React is trying to show those problems to you, saying, hey, in the future, when we start doing this asynchronous concurrent model of things, this way of doing global count like this, it's no longer going to work like you expect. So a strict mode, it's going to show you that it is broken. That way, when you actually start using these newer features in React, you won't run into the problems of it not working as you expect. So in order to just kind of sum up everything that React does when it comes to preventing side effects, is your actual function body of your component is going to be run twice. Your, anytime you set a state variable using the function version, that function will be run twice. Anytime you call a reducer using the dispatch function, that reducer function is going to be called twice. Same thing with using memo, that use memo is going to be called twice. Now, if you're using class components, it's still going to do the exact same thing. For example, your constructor is going to be called twice. The render function is going to be called twice. Anytime you use should component update or get derived state from props, that's going to be run twice. And then finally, same thing if you try to use the function version of setting state, that'll be run two times. Now this is the biggest and most complicated of all the different things that React strict mode does, but there's one other thing that also is very similar to this related to use effects that I wanna talk about, which is the second thing React strict mode does. So this example here is quite a bit simpler. We just have a button that when we click on it, increments itself, and then we have a use effect that we're using. And what this part of React strict mode does is it helps remove some unintended side effects like the previous version, but it specifically has to deal with mounting and unmounting your component. What happens now with React strict mode is every single time that you mount a component, so essentially every time you render a component on your page for the first time, React is going to mount that component it's then going to unmount that component and then remount it again. You can actually see this if we inspect our console real quick, you can see that this effect is being logged out twice. 
As soon as I refresh my page, you can see it logs out effect twice. And that's because my component is being mounted, it runs my use effect, it then unmounts my component and remounts that component and now my effect is running a second time. This is to help make sure that you don't have any unintended side effects in your use effect and most importantly that you're cleaning up your use effects properly. This is actually an example of how not to properly clean up your use effect. You'll notice here that this use effect that I wrote, essentially it says every time I press a key to log out what the current count is and every time I change my account, I'm going to update that event listener. So if I just click the L key, for example, you can see it logs out zero twice. This is obviously incorrect because we only want it to log out once because we only have this event listener being hooked up once. But React Strict Mode is making sure my use effect fires twice, which means since I did not clean up my event listener, it's now being hooked up twice. To make this actually work properly, I need to make sure I have a return for my use effect that is going to remove that event listener. So I can remove event listener on key press. And I want to remove this handler event function. We'll just create that function. Handler, just like this. Whoops. There we go. And we can just move that console log into there. And whoops. I was trying to use both arrow and normal syntax at the same time. And then let's turn this into that handler. So now, if I just run this, we can inspect our page real quick. Go to our console. Oops, go to our console, clear everything out, refresh. You'll see it still logs effect twice, but now when I click a key, it's only logging out our count one time. Once every time I press my key, it logs out my count. If I update my account, you can see my effect is rerunning every time I change my count, and boom, it still only logs out one time. So this React side effect here, this strict mode side effect, is just telling me, hey, you forgot to clean up your use effect, and that's the big benefit of running your use effects twice and mounting and unmounting your component every single time it renders for the very first time. Now this specifically is going to affect all of your use effects, your use layout effects, your use insertion effect hook, which is something you'll probably never really use much of, as well as component did mount and component will mount if you're using class components. Now there's only four more things strict mode will do, and luckily they're all really straightforward and you'll probably not run into any of them. The first one here is dealing with component will mount, component will receive props, and component will update. These are essentially deprecated methods. You'll actually notice if I try to create a component will mount, if I type in component will mount, you'll see that it's actually crossed off because this is deprecated. They don't want you to use this anymore, but they still allow you to. But if you have one of these different methods being defined, when you inspect and look at your console, you're gonna see you have warnings, and these warnings essentially are saying, hey, this component will update has been renamed. If you want to use it, you need to refix it with unsafe underscore, or just you know use something else instead. They're essentially saying, these methods are not gonna work very well with the new asynchronous model that React is moving towards, so you should move your code away from them as soon as possible because they're currently not going to work. And if you really need them, you can put the unsafe method or unsafe tag in front of it. And this is just going to you know, say, hey, I know this is not what I should be doing, but I'm gonna do it anyway. The real reason that this warning is useful though is because you may be using a library that has this type of code behind the scenes. You may not realize it, but you'll see that warning that'll let you know, hey, this library is using this code that probably won't work in the future. So you might wanna either update it or move away from that library. Now this next point I wanna talk about has to do with using string refs inside of React. It's an old way of doing refs in React where you would pass a string to ref, and then you could access it by saying this.refs and then whatever that text is afterwards. But you'll see immediately in my editor, this is being crossed out saying it's deprecated. If I inspect my console, you're gonna see that if I just refresh my page here, I'm going to get a warning that says, hey, you shouldn't be using string refs. Instead, use create ref. So essentially what they're saying is you should create a ref, for example, button ref equals create ref, which is a function that you can use inside of React right here. And then what I can do is I can log out button, whoops, yep, this dot button ref dot current. And then down here, I can just pass in that button ref. And that is going to fix the problem. Everything's going to work fine. If I inspect in my console, I no longer have that error. That's the old error showing up. As you can see, it's just rendering out my button as I expect. Now, again, this is probably not something you're going to run into yourself. You're probably not going to write this type of code, especially if you're using like use ref inside of a functional component. But again, it's important to have this information there. So if you're using a library that uses this kind of stuff, you'll be alerted of those errors. The next thing that's going to be checked for is the usage of find DOM node. This is a method inside of React that allows you to actually get the DOM implementation of different components. For example, if we call it on this component right here on itself, it'll just return to us this button. And if I just inspect the page, I can show you that's exactly what happens. Click this button, you can see it returns the actual button with the text inside of it. 
Now, of course, we get a warning that says find DOM node is deprecated and you shouldn't use it. And again, this is really important if you're using libraries that happen to use find DOM node. Now, if you don't want to use find DOM node, you have it in your code, you want to remove it, essentially just use refs instead. Just put a ref on this button, for example, button ref, and that's going to solve all your problems for you because DOM node is just the bad way of doing it and refs are so much better. Now the last thing strict mode is going to do is something that hopefully you never run into and that is the usage of legacy context. So there was an implementation of context before the actual implementation that was like the legacy beta version. And if any code is still running that beta version of the context, you're gonna get a warning that says, hey, you're using the legacy version, you should update to the real version because this is the older version, it might not work as intended. Again, your code probably doesn't have this, but you might run into a library with it. And it's nice to have that warning in the console to let you know that you're using the older version of this context API. And that's everything React Strict Mode does. Now we covered a lot of different hooks and concepts in this video. And if you wanna deep dive into those hooks and learn even more hooks beyond that, you're gonna to wanna to check out my completely free React Hook Simplified course. It's linked down in the description and covers every single React hook you need to know. And it's completely free. Now with that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.